you all know by now. And uh, that's what my friends call me. But uh, on this uh, world of Twitch, you can call me Lord Gazamba. So uh, I wanted to bring to you a prelude for a brand new adventure. Um, it's a homegrown adventure um, I designed. Uh, and it will be, uh, for us, it will be adventure number 827. And the title will be Seeking Soul Ash. And we're going to start this tomorrow evening on our 7 p.m. broadcast. It's going to run two sessions, so it will not be a one-nighter. We'll, we won't finish it tomorrow night, but we'll get into the, the meat of it definitely tomorrow. So um, I was thinking about where we are, and I had a talk with a couple of my players on um, where we started with a lot of, um, of the adventuring, uh, like groups, and how we started in Hardby. So let me uh, just go back. I'm trying to get some water bottle out of the way there. Um, let me go back in time uh, to when we first started to uh, do adventuring in the, in the realm of Hardby. Um, probably starts out with, uh, and this thing's falling apart, man, because we used it so much, but this, it starts out with the Slaver's Reference. Um, we did a lot of adventuring with this along the Wild Coast. Uh, with a group of a lot of Knights of Yulik. Um, in fact, uh, the group really doesn't have a name. We actually call them the Slavers. Um, and they're like the, the top rated mercenary group in our in our created city, uh, which is in the southernmost part of the county of Yulik, Altamira. Um, but from this, we kind of, a lot of things merged um, and some ideas came up and then I, I must say there was a lot of good articles that came out um, that made it really easy and I'm looking through all my notes here I got stuff all over the place for this one but uh, it made it really easy and uh, the one uh, the one module uh, I'm sorry the one uh, I think it was a dragon or maybe not dungeon uh, came out with the, the Harby City map and a lot of information on it so what we did was um, uh, I said to my group, well, let's, uh, we had a lot of adventuring in Greyhawk, and then we had Altamira, and we had a lot of miscellaneous groups, we have a group in the Bessie Forest, and, uh, you know, some, um, and, and some other places, but Harby seemed like a great place to develop, so uh, we started out with a group uh, called the Harby Irregulars, had a second, you know, and they are uh, very well liked in, 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 in Harby. Second group, Reckless Indifference, which is a little bit more chaotic of a group. I've run them on, and you've seen them uh, in Adventure, I'm going to say Adventure number 822, um, A Tale from Knuckle Paler. And then the group, this group, the Hiltless Swords, which is the third uh, group that we have in Harby. And uh, they are, uh, they are the ones we're going to use on this adventure number 827. You met them. The first time I ever ran them online was uh, Adventure 821, um, a deal from Knuckle Paler, and that's the first time uh, I think I, I actually broadcast live. So with this group, um, what was cool is that uh, this group, we have what's called a general experience pool group. So... If you look in this thing, uh, here's my log. You have, everyone has three characters. They usually only play two of each. But this is in case someone can't make it or um, gives a little variety of classes. So we have um, we have three. Um, you have the capability of actually uh, running three um, characters uh, with choosing two. And uh, that way, and everyone gets experience equally across so if there's someone that misses a night, they're not worried about falling behind. Or, you know, if you want to have a little bit of a different play style or play a couple fringe type characters, then it works. So I'll say this. I like Harby. Harby's really a lot different than Greyhawk. Harby is a, a place where um, some of the uh, craziest things can happen because the rules are a little different. I mean, you have the Gynarchy there, but you have Greyhawk City's attempted influence into... Hardby, and that has made um, that has really pissed off a lot of the uh, of the uh, status quo in there. And for example, uh, Judge Alita Norbelos is one of them. And uh, you know, uh, it's she's doing everything she can to push 
uh, the Greyhawk influence out, even using very vile means to do it. So uh, we also have, a, you know, a, it's a female woman based. You have the Throne of Wood. We have a lot of our members that are uh, in, in these groups have been sponsored and have joined the Throne of Wood and have come, uh, have come and done missions for them. And it's a political organization. So you get, um, you get both sides. You have the Longlands, which are like the, the goods. And then you have the, you know, the, the Norbaloses and some of the other families. And they're all uh, Gurnish gears. They're all vying against each other. And uh, it makes for an interesting uh, role play uh, concept with, uh, with these groups. I find it uh, really fascinating. Uh, plus, you have the Greyhawk influence, and I'll say this, we have some characters in our groups that are basically infiltrators for Harby that have come from Greyhawk and are over looking at what's going on in Harby and reporting back to people in Greyhawk. So that really is a cool aspect to it. So this group, the, Hilt, the Hiltless Swords, and I don't know how the name came up. I'm sorry, I got my reading glasses and got my contacts in today, so I'm back and forth with this. Um, I'm not sure how the name came up. I, I guess no one can make a decision and someone makes a decision and go, oh, that sounds good. Uh, the levels, it's just four, fifth, and sixth for this adventure. I just came up with this idea, you know, if you're sitting there in the middle of the night, you're like, man, that just sounds like a good idea for, for, for a, a mission module or whatever. So uh, here's the general gist, starting from, uh, I'm not going to give out a lot of information, but, um, you know, because I know some of our, my players may be watching, but, uh, and then tomorrow night, it'll really, we'll really get into the down and dirty on it as, as we run this. But uh, I put up some of the, uh, see on the right hand side, I got some of the figures of the, and, and all these were painted by Bill in our group. Fantastic paint jobs. This is, that's just some of the members scrolling through on the right, and uh, got the map up in the middle. This map is a little different than the other map I had a couple of adventures ago. This map shows. Just Harby here, uh, Harby uh, in Woolly Bay, and then it shows Stormkeep. Stormkeep and the Mountaineer Militia. Stormkeep is a Greyhawk post, and the Mountaineer Militia is a Greyhawk post. Um, and they have a lot of flying griffins there, and they patrol that area of the uh, hills of the Alborals. Um So uh, I'll say that the, you know, it's nearby that's going to come into play. Um, so that's why I have this map up. Um, and just showing a location that is going to be uh, going to be used uh, tomorrow evening. You have a ruined keep up top uh, with a surrounding hilly, very wildernessy area, and a podunk town. And we'll we'll get to that maybe in, in the discussion here. But um, the Hellish Swords are, are a group, and uh, I looked at this because um, we keep track, and I, I think we got this idea from from what we did in our BattleTech playing days is to rank the mercenary units based on notoriety or if you were if you were Morden Kane and if you were tense or whoever who would you pick to do a mission and work work it what its way all the way down kind of we gave them a ranking now whereas Greyhawk we have 13 different mercenary groups now all of them are not all player characters what this is is I've incorporated a lot of inter intermingling a lot of role playing between uh, groups so the canon groups um, in Greyhawk are there and then plus four or five other player character groups are there. And that gives us 13 total. And in hard B, the total is a whopping seven, but it is a smaller city. So if you look here, you got the hard B irregulars. Whoops. You got the hard B irregulars. You have a group called the Furies. It's almost all females. There's one male in that group. Reckless Indifference, which is in our player character group, which we discussed. And uh, we've, you've seen them online if you watched uh, if you watched uh, uh, Deal with Knuckle Paler, that was the Reckless Indifference. The Fighters of the Light and Harbys, new to Harby. Fighters of the Light and Harby are, uh, are the Fighters of the Light have a, a, you know, a group in Greyhawk, and Foltis is trying to expand its uh, influence. So the Fighters of the Light are like, a, it's a franchise. They're in almost every city. They're in Althamira as well. All right, and then you have, oh, the Helpless Swords are next. And then you have, I think that's a, the Swords of Redress. And then the Breakers of Chaos, which is an all halfling loop group that's actually right outside the city, but that's a, that's also that's probably the only group that is mentioned somewhere in, in a publication or in a module. So these were all made up for the most part by us because there isn't really any mercenary or adventuring groups that I can find published anywhere in Harvey. So it kind of gives us a little leeway to to do that. So the Hill of Swords are a group that's trying to make a name for themselves. And uh, 
They are, uh, it's a mix of characters, neutrals and goods. Um, you know, I don't really condone playing evil characters or some rare exceptions, but um, evil gets boring very quickly. <laughs> you know, how many, you know, how many people can you torture before you've had enough? You know what I mean? I kind of like the uh, gray areas and uh, the people who uh, really have a cause. That's what I like to see in, in, in my character, uh, my player characters. Uh, and I must say, I got some great players. Um, I know I'm buttery, buttering them up right now, but um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, someone said it is dangerous as grasping a hiltless sword. That is, uh, how did I not know? Okay. Well, thanks for that, man. I did not know that that it was a it was a Game of Thrones reference, but that's okay. Cool, man. <laughs> well, thanks, Bill, for that. Bill's chimed in on there, and I appreciate that. Um, you have uh, a mix of characters. Uh, real quick, I'm going to go through some of them. Uh, I'm going to go through ones that I know are being played uh, in this two or three group thing. So, um, Bill's characters first. You have Merrick. He's a fifth level uh, ranger, human chaotic good. Um, you know he's a he specialized. So the, uh, he he actually is a demi human hunter, and then at fifth level, his undeads his second one. He has a couple really cool long swords, golden avenger, which has a searing light ability and a wraith blade, which uh, returns dra uh, drain levels back. It's pretty uh, some pretty neat things he has. Um, they need a they need a ranger is going to be good for tracking on this adventure. Uh, and then you have Emin, Assassin. Oop, did I say that? Shadow Mage Assassin. <laughs> Fourth level Shadow Mage, fifth level Assassin. Uh, LN, Human. Member of the uh, Rope Makers Specialty Guild in, uh, in Harby. And uh, here's our Shadow Mage class that enhances your uh, stealth classes. So, um, and he, he's a must. I told Bill he's a must. He had to take him, and you'll see. We'll see why in the discussions maybe a little bit. Um, okay, so you get the Allen's characters that are being played. Benita Martel, uh, sixth level specialty priest of Joramy, human female. I got alignment uh, looks like true neutral. Um, this is that she likes like when we're out on a ship. She likes to sun herself and uh, get a tan and is very aloof and part. She's part of the sor the sorority pick on the uh, on the uh, right. Um, side that this one that just popped up there that she's one of she's the second one from the left and uh interesting character and i think she's gonna be a pretty uh, cool powerful character at higher levels javid um wild elf chaotic neutral male mage four fighter thief fifth fifth thief he's got um he's got a slight um this is around uh, developments he's got a slight in insanity issue uh, he was a 27 to die, and then he gives a, a slight, uh, he has an insanity effect on the back here. And you can see there's all sorts of megalomania and hallucinations, and great. So I have to deal, I have to deal with him every time uh, something new pops up. So uh, <coughs> excuse me, yeah, uh, it, it can it can be a great role play opportunity, or it can be something very crazy. So uh, we go to uh, Mark's two that are going to be played, uh, McKelty. Um, he appeared in the last adventure that was online with this group, uh, Crusader Sixth um, of, uh, I believe it's Azerbo, right? No, oh, it's Osprem. I apologize. So Azerbo, um, he fights with a trident. Um, his nickname's Bubba. So he, he likes being called Bubba a lot. He's a um, half orc, uh, lawful neutral crusader, sixth level. Harby is well known for. Um, uh, tolerance to its half orc population, which I believe is like five to ten percent of all of Harby, there are a lot in the docks, a lot of them are seamen. So, uh, that's where uh, this is where McKelty comes from. I like the character a lot. Uh, and then, uh, I think uh, he's not playing here. And uh, Ravati, uh, water elementalist, uh, fifth level, human neutral good, uh, a very great deal it out damage wise, uh, spellcaster. You know anything about second edition elementalists? You know we specialized them a little bit more, so they can only really use their sphere of spells. Um, she has a great item. She got at low level, which will provide, prove to be a boon for her. It's called the Staff of Winter. Now it's a plus zero weapon. It radiates cold. Uh, it does plus three da points of cold damage. But here's the cool thing: when wielded, um, 
you get one point per cold damage per die added on to a spell. So if you cast a, say, a Snowlock Snowball Swarm, and you roll eight die three, you're gonna roll eight die three plus eight. That can really add up, especially you know, especially at higher levels. So it's like when you think about that, you get a mundane item at lower level, and she never. It's not. It can hit plus one or better creatures, but it's a plus zero staff. But it has this special power, so she hit the jackpot with that. Hint, hint. Uh, DM. Uh, is she? Is he the pet? Mark the pet now. I don't know. We'll have to ask Mark what he thinks on that one. So uh, Ravati's another fantastic class uh, uh, character played. Another one of the sorority girls. She's of course the one all in blue when that one pops up. That that uh, picture of four. Um, you know. So uh, this one here, the one in the middle of the, in the aqua. That's that's Ravati. Erin's the one on the far left. That's another one of Marks, but she's not going to be going on the adventure. She may be in the role play part of it, but she won't be. Uh, she won't be going on the uh, on the main adventure. So, um, it, uh, you know, it's cool the way uh, I, I allow them to pick ahead of time, just so I can balance it out. All right. So then you have Walt, and Walt has um, Rafiki. He did not go last time, but he is a. Uh, um, he's a. The last class we really added in out of our 30s, 40 some classes of, uh, we put in the thug, which is a thief thug class. He's a six level half orc neutral. Um, he is from Greyhawk, so don't know what his uh, doings are here, but we he is a Greyhawk uh, um, character that has come down to Hardby. Um, he has an arm cut off, so even though he can use a shield as a thug, he currently can't do that. Thugs get plus one to hit with weapons. Um, they uh, they can put stats into uh, where, the, where their thieving abilities go. But the problem is is that they can't really. Uh, they're not really super thieves. You know, they're they're basically more uh, strong men. But uh, I like. You know, he's a really cool character. The way uh, personality wise, he's fun. So uh, that's the Rafiki and a Gattaca. The other one is a Walt's uh, other character is an archer druid. An interesting multi-class option four or five sylvan elf true neutral can cast some nice outdoor spells and uh shoot that bow real well so you got a real good mix of, of spells with this with this character class um archers are always uh in our world have been the, the, the damage dealers because of the archer uh, class we use right out of that dragon magazine way back in the day i think with dragon 60 and uh so um you know, they can really throw out some damage, but then they become the targets of the opposing mages a lot. I believe the two NPCs I'm going to use is uh, Joanna Tesley, 5th level uh, Inquisitor, which is a Paladin subclass, lawful neutral human. Um, she uh, she fights with Horseman's Mason Longbow, a little bit of an attitude. She is, um, she is uh, a Winchester blood character. Um... One of my NPCs, the one, the uh, fallen Winchester Emerson, uh, is seated in half the half the planet. It appears so. She uh, she is uh, wants to find out about her father. Emerson passed in a venture about a year and a half ago, but um, you know she's uh, she's one of those. So you know, a little, little nutty. And then you have Calliophilia. Yeah, that's a. I don't know how I came up with that name. That's a mouthful and a half. Four, four, five. Cleric Mage Thief, the utilities uh, NPC character. So uh, we have someone who can cast spells. We have someone who can do some healing. There's someone who can do some thievery if need be. So um, t uh, she is a uh, she's half elven. She's one of the, she's the far right sorority girl. Um, she was a, a member of uh, you know they all came up in the college in in uh, in um, Harby. Uh, so they were all uh, all members and all friends uh, for the most part. So uh, that would round up to ten. They'll be going on this adventure now. A little background of what we expect. So um, as you can see there's a bar scene in the in the in the middle in the bottom, and uh, the group will be uh, hanging out and uh, they're going to get a, a courier. Uh, actually, be a, a representative from the uh, the great. Uh, I'm sorry, the Harby Courts. And it will be a uh, mission uh, commission for them to uh, seek out a wanted criminal named Solash. Um, and this is this warrant is not signed by Alita. This warrant is actually signed by Judge Thea Havalos, who has a very sterling reputation. 
So it's not someone that you're looking at that has a, uh, you know, it's this is not a setup or anything like that. You know, worrying about oh no, we have to do something for Lita. No, this is a, uh, this is a mission that will be uh, that a legitimate judge is asking them to go seek out this character, and what they're going to have to do then is they're going to have to go find um, find this person using whatever means necessary. Um, and uh, do some research and do a lot of it. This is an investigative type adventure. They're going to have to go and find out uh, why they're being, uh, you know, what, what's up with this. There's not going to be a lot of details on the on the crime. You know, that's, that's not part of the warrant here. And uh, it's going to take them out into the Aberrells. As I'm surmising this, it'll take them to the Aberrells and they'll have to uh, into this community, and which has some anomalies to it. And there'll be reasons for them going here. And I'll have to find out some. There'll be a couple of sub stories here as well. So maybe there'll be a branch off of an adventure one or two. And uh, I think it'll be a very interesting uh, evening. Um, and then it'll take them on. And I don't, you know, it'll be one of those where maybe the, uh, there won't not be a lot of dice rolling early on. But we, we shall see. Uh, we shall see what happens. Uh, excuse me. Not, not crack. We shall see what happens with uh, that king. Sorry, uh, with the, with the group. Um, trying not to give out a lot of details on it. Um, I'll say, uh, let's see. They will come across some. Here's some tidbits. They will come across. Uh, if you can see in the picture, the top picture, there's all, like a Viking mead hall, the long building. Uh, that is the the inn name is the Last Call. Okay, and. Uh, they may find out some information there. Um, this community um, name is has a very distinctive name. It's called Thunderstrike Villa, and uh, it'll be uh, somewhere within uh, 50 miles of uh, Stormkeep. Okay, so uh, that's a little bit of the tidbits. That, that's all I want to give now. Um, I tried to turn this into a different type of, you know, we've been doing a lot of um, adventures where you got E's uh, forces up or you got the, the, the standard good versus evil conflict going on in the last couple of, of adventures you've seen. I want a good old fashioned uh, whodunit monster hunting type, change it up a little bit and uh, where everything may not be um, what it seems. Uh, there may be a shades of gray as to what, um, what, what, what uh, we're looking for uh, with uh, who we're trying to find, um, why they're trying to find them. Um, so uh, I think it'll be a very interesting, uh, it might be a very interesting evening. They, um, the group is is um, got a lot of variety to it. I know, you know, this group is not hard, hardcore on fighters, but you got a lot of good spellcasters, and you got a lot, a mix of resilient characters, so I think they'll do just fine. Um, I would say that um, the group will, you know, will be able to really uh, wean some information early on and, uh, and make their way to this point, and then... Uh, you know, see what happens here. And like I said, there's a couple sidebars. It's not just a completely led by the nose linear adventure. They may be able to be pulled in a couple of different directions. I try to do that occasionally. Because, you know, the worst thing anyone wants is to be like, oh, well, you, you want to do this, but no, you can't. You got to go do this. So I'm trying to make it so that they got some options as far as uh, locations as to where they, where they want to go. So um, also, I tried to throw in some new or some old uh, types of encounters that they haven't come across in a while. Um, I think I did a pretty good job with it, but I guess we'll just see, you know. Uh, I, I'm trying to think here. I, I'll say this. Um, Harby is a cool, if you don't, if you've never done adventuring in Harby, there's a lot of references out there. I think there's an entire Earth Journal um, series uh, dedicated to it. Now it's got a couple different places, but you can cross-reference them over. For example, I have, uh, um, and it's in this type of writing, it's Earth Journal 10. Earth Journal 10 has a lot of great information on Harvey. So what I did is I uh, have it so that um, they, are, uh, they start out the plow on the stars. 
that's an inn in the east end. So, uh, you know, and they've been there before. It's got, um, it's got a uh, distinctive number of waitresses that all have the names. Uh, I think there's uh, Jill, Kelly, Tiffany, Sabrina. Yeah, you get the idea if, you, if, you, if you're of the proper age. So um, that's where we'll be starting. And that's actually right out of, uh, you know, I've merged that um, version into this version and used a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, maps and crossovers like here here's the earth journal it's very nicely done here's the earth journal map okay it's I'm gonna give them credit because uh, it's a lot of work by hand but uh, all the color codings is types of buildings and I cross reference both of them together and merge it into one to give a lot more locations so um, kudos to whoever you know who did that it was a lot of hard work I really appreciate it but um, I'm just uh, scanning through here. Uh, Sabrina is missing. That's right. Sabrina is still missing. Uh, one of the waitresses from uh, from the Plow and the Stars. They don't know what happened to her. So uh, let's have a great night tomorrow night. I'm um, I'm hoping that uh, you know. I think we should get started on time, but I don't think that'll be a, a problem. Um, once again, my name is Jay a.k.a. Lord Gazumba. This will be, believe it or not, the 827th adventure I've run with my in my campaign and for my adventuring group starting all the way back to 1980. And uh, the title is Seeking Solash. Um, it's a, definitely a homegrown adventure. It's set in our, our Greyhawk campaign. Right out, you know, based, this one's based in the city of Harby. So we'll have some, uh, some tricks and some uh, fun stuff and some good role play and some good combat. Hopefully we'll have it all t uh, tomorrow night. And I really hope if you get an opportunity, please um, feel free to uh, check us out um, on uh, tomorrow's Twitch broadcast. Um, I know we are, our viewership is up every week, and I really appreciate it. We're really trying to show our first, second edition tabletop unique style out to the uh, to everyone. Um, you know, for for only the purposes of the love of the game. And to show that uh, you know there's a different way to play, uh, you know, there's theater of the mind is great. I, man, if you have limited resources, it's a fantastic way to do things. But we've kind of upped it and taken it to the level of showing, you know, ranges and uh, you know figures and having to have a painted figure for every character. And I try to have as many, all the figures I can for the for the monsters and encounters. And sometimes it's not possible, but as many as 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 possible. Um, so. Uh, Come see our play style. We really would appreciate it. And uh, I'm taking these off. I don't know why I'm going up and uh, back and forth uh, the whole time with them. Once again, thank you so very much for watching this. See you tomorrow night.